come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the fear you can hear. Welcome to the world of terrifying imagination. Our suspense-filled tale is about two ladies. One heedless, one, alas, headless. To meet them both, we shall have to span an ocean and several centuries. The story of both ladies comes from Rudley Castle in the Cotswold Hills of England. But the tale of the first lady belongs in this century, while the legend of the second comes riding to us out of the medieval past. Charles. Charles! What? What? Charles, wake up. Can't you hear them? There they are again. What is it, Beth? The hoofbeats. This time they're coming straight for the house. Where are you going, Beth? I've got to see. It's the dead of night. You can't see anything. It's bright moonlight. Oh, God. She's right in the courtyard below. <laughs> She's stopping. Get out of your mind. She's throwing back the hood of her cage. You come back to bed. <gasps> She has no hair. Nothing out there. Oh no! Her head in her hand. She she's holding it up by the hair. Charles, come quick, quick! All right, I'm coming. The, the face it, it looks a thousand years old. Oh, it's my face, Charles. Help me! It's me. <laughs> mystery drama, A Lady Never Loses Her Head, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Kim Hunter. It is sponsored in part by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal, and by new sugar-free diet 7-Up. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Oh, somebody's been drinking my sugar-free diet 7-Up, and it's all good. Oh, actually, I saved a little. Oh! Hiya, Goldie. What's brewing? That's Miss Goldilocks to you. Oh, come on, kid. You mean you don't remember me? The cottage, the three chairs, the <gasps> porridge? Baby bear. In the fur. Been a long time, Goldie. But baby bear. Just call me BB. You drank all the sugar-free diet 7-Up, and I have to conduct another diet drink taste test today. Well, yeah, I saw the sign on the door, a professional taste tester, huh? But how? can I conduct my taste test now? Why bother? I tried those other diet drinks, too. You'll notice there's still plenty of them around. Why not ask me? Well, okay, B.B. Tell me, why did you drink all the sugar-free Diet 7-Up? I like the taste. Light, fresh, natural, sugar-free Diet 7-Up is definitely unbearably delicious. Mm Mm-hmm. The title of our tale is A Lady Never Loses Her Head. This has been an accepted dictum since the beginning of recorded history. But in the literal sense, in feudal times, a lady unfortunately could, and frequently did, lose her head. Thank heavens, of course, that is no longer possible. Or is it? Let's travel to London and start our narrative in the gloomy, gray atmosphere of Scotland Yard. Excuse me, Inspector. Yes, Carlos, what is it? Young lady outside to see you. Most attractive. Blue-eyed, blonde hair, about 24. American, about... Yes, yes, I I can do without the vital statistics. Does she have a name? Yes, sir. Beth Stanton. Miss Beth Stanton. Stanton? My old friend Biff's daughter. Well, don't just stand there, man. Bring her in. Right this way, Miss Stanton. Oh, thank you, Sergeant. My dear girl, you are Biff Stanton's daughter, of course. Uh, Of course. Oh, how nice to meet you. Come in, come in. Dear me, this is a pleasure. Oh, do sit down. Oh, thank you, Inspector Finchley. Tell me, what are you doing in England? Well, first, before anything, following Dad's orders and coming to see you. Also, uh, I brought you something from him. Really? I, I should have brought it earlier or, or sent it, but well, after he died, I was a mess. For so long, it had just been the two of us. It took me a year to paste myself back together again. I wish I could have helped. At the very least, I should have come over for the funeral. Oh, there, there was none. Dad wouldn't have wanted that. Mm, I can imagine. Anyway, he wanted you to have this. 
Oh, no, no, I can't. No, you have to. Biff Stanton's wings. Any idea of what they mean to an old fogey who went through the Battle of Britain shoulder to shoulder with him? I can tell you something, my dear. These mean more to me than the crown jewels. <laughs> you know, you're everything Dad said you'd be. <laughs> Hello for real, Uncle Alfie. <laughs> After that, what can I do to make England yours? <laughs> Not a thing. It's already mine. Oh, how so? Well, it, it, it's mad, wild, out of sight. Here I was on the boat coming over, still fighting all the trauma of Dad's death, and suddenly I met this marvelous Englishman. Well... Only a little less marvelous than you turned out to be, of course. <laughs> and just like that, I did a crazy thing. What was that? I married him. I'm not really Beth Stanton anymore. I'm Mrs. Charles Rudley. Well, dear me, dear me. Congratulations. <laughs> I deserve them. I'm so lucky. Well, I'd like to meet your husband. What's he like? Too much. He's tall, black-haired, blue eyes, and and just so... so Englishy English. <laughs> well, now, will you live here or in America? Oh, it has to be here because of Charles. Ah, What's his line of work? <laughs> he doesn't have to work, actually. Although he is a very fine artist. Well, I envy this chap in more ways than one. Why doesn't he have to work? Oh, well, because most of his time is spent in, in managing his estate. Ah. <gasps> Which reminds me, I've got to run. I I'm off to the ancestral home in the Cotswolds to take up my position as Lady of the Manor. Ah, Dorset, eh? Lovely country. Whereabouts? Uh, uh, Chauncey Castle. I expect you know it. Well, I'm afraid I'm a bit shaky on Burke's peerage. Oh, Charles isn't an earl or a duke, really. He's, it's just his family line. I don't even know what his title is exactly. Hmm. Well, would you like me to find out? No, in this day and age, what does it matter? Now, Uncle Alfie, I must go. Charles went on ahead of me with his sister. Nora insisted she had to have a day to get things ready. And uh. I told Charles I needed a full day to shop for a sort of late trousseau. So he, he drove her up with most of my bags. All right, my dear. I shan't keep you. Uh, give me a few weeks to get settled. And I promise you'll be our first house guest. You only have to ask me. Bye-bye. Uh, yes, sir. A very tasty young lady. Hmm. And a hasty one. How's that, sir? Marion Hastropintet. Hmm. Uh, beg pardon, Inspector? Oh, nothing, nothing. Too many years of policeman, I suppose. One tends to fall into the habit of looking for trouble. Still, she is the daughter of the best friend I ever had, and she must be a very rich young woman. I say, Crothers, rustle me a copy of Burt's Peerage, will you? Something I'd like to have a look at. <laughs> so, my lady... How do you like your castle? Oh, Charles, it's, it's something else. It's what? I, I mean it. I, I mean it's too much. It's it's magnificent. It's breathtaking, thrilling. There, there, there just aren't enough words. But it's sort of creepy, too. Creepy? Well, you know, everything's so old and so big. <laughs> yes, and so very drafty. Well, I'm glad we won't be living here. Well, we can if you want, my darling. Oh, no, please, no. I feel like an exhibit. It's so comfortable at the gatehouse. Yes, except for poor Nora. She is sort of underfoot. Oh, come on. It's not that small. And I'm not going to put Nora out of her own home. You're sure you don't mind, dear? Are all these paintings legitimate ancestors? Yes. Charles? What is it, Beth? Who... Who is that? Ah, yes. I thought that one might pique your curiosity. That was the Lady Elizabeth Chauncey. Beyond question, the most attractive of all the family. Until now. But she looks just like me. A very pallid copy, my darling. Besides, she was very dark. Not like my fair and golden-haired American beauty. <laughs> well, still, can you imagine all those years ago, someone in your family who... Oh, when did she die? Oh, somewhere in the middle 1500s. She died very young, as the story goes. How? Oh, accidentally. Darling, I think we ought to get back to the gatehouse. It's almost time for tea. <laughs> Do you have 
milk and your tea, Beth? Uh, no, thanks. Oh. Well, how did you like the castle? Oh, it's great. <laughs> I, I mean, it's terribly impressive and fascinating and, and inexpressibly gloomy, damp, and musty. Well, I didn't say that. Oh, but it was what you were thinking. <laughs> oh, no, you're marvelous. Yes, I thought all of those things. I just hope Charles doesn't want to live there. Oh, heavens dear, not a chance. You see all the rebuilding, refurbishing that's going on there? Yes, I did. That's why I thought maybe... Oh, not intended for private life, Beth. Strictly for the public. Beg pardon? Well, the only way of supporting these charming and historic white elephants is to open them to the public for a small fee, which uh, mounts up. Oh, what a shame. Your own home. Poor Charles. Oh, he doesn't mind any more than I do. The place is much too big and full of cobwebs and ghosts. It gives me the shivers. Ghosts? You mean real ones that actually haunt? Well, if you want to believe in such things, oh, the usual clanking of armor and dragging of chains. Except, of course, for the Lady Elizabeth. The, the one whose portrait I saw today? Oh, I'm not sure if I know you did. Oh, we've had a great many Elizabeths. Well, the, the very young one, the one who looked like me. Oh, that would be she. Yes, you, you do favor her. You know, Charles was so, so funny about her. I mean, he didn't seem to want to talk about how she died. Oh, jolly right, I should think. Gruesome, silly story. Well, she was married to one of the first earls of Chauncey. A man quite literally, believe it or not, old enough to be her grandparent. And so, quite naturally, she fell in love with one of the young bloods who traipsed around in the retinue. Oh, what was his name? Oh, heavens dear, I haven't the foggiest. No one remembers him. At all events, sex being just as urgent in those days, if not quite so publicized, the two of them were caught cavorting in uh, flagranti delicto, I think is the polite Latin phrase. And the elderly Earl was quite put out about it. So much so that he he had the poor little thing beheaded. Oh, oh violent times, you know, violent measures. Even that wasn't quite enough for him. What do you mean? What else could he do to her? Well, it gets a bit bloody, dear. Maybe we'd better just No, I want I wanna know. Uh, well I'm afraid he had the head impaled on a pike and left to wither on the battlements. The body, of course, was interred. Oh, my God. Oh, nasty types they were in those days. How old was she? Oh, see, I think I remember. Oh, yes, 24. Just my age. <laughs> so young to die and be buried forever. Oh. Well, the legend is, of course, that she hasn't been. Our parlor legend. You mean she... She haunts? Oh, rather. She was quite a horsewoman, history tells us. And any night, but particularly when the moon is full, she rides the grounds, searching for her lost head. She's quite famous locally. <sighs> I must admit, when the winds from the west, I, I sometimes swear myself I can hear the hoofbeats. Wake up. What, what, what is it, Dolly? Do you hear them? Why? Somebody riding a horse. It's 2 30 in the morning. But, but can't you hear them? Do you, you don't suppose Elizabeth. Oh, that stupid legend. I'm really quite furious at Nora. Oh, no, 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 don't be, please. I expect I'm the stupid one. It, it's all so new to me. I'll settle down. Let me assist in that process. Oh, darling. Darling. I don't hear the hoofbeats anymore. You never did. Just the excited beating of your husband's heart. Oh, I love you. And I love you. You're so lovely. I can't wait to paint you. I'll sit for you. Do you know what I'd like to do tomorrow? What? Make a life mask of you. Oh, how do you do that? You'll see. Tomorrow. You'll see. <laughs> 
Charles really has something more sinister than history lurking in the dark corners of Chauncey Castle. And what, if one examines it, is a life mask. A mold of the features, once done in plaster of Paris, today in modern plastic, a technique often employed to perpetuate someone departed from this life and originally named the Death Mask. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Ever had a tall, frosty glass of amplitude? Well, if your beer is Budweiser, you've had it often. Amplitude is a fancy word for the entire taste phenomenon, the total experience of flavor. Next time you take a healthy swallow of Bud, watch what happens. Think about the sensations you're experiencing. Notice how the flavor of Bud comes on nice and easy. Not too strong, not too quick, just right. Notice the clean, crisp togetherness of Bud's taste. Everything in perfect balance, with no single element jumping out at you. And there'll be no aftertaste either, no hanging on. And you'll be refreshed and ready for another glassful. Actually, Bud drinkers have been experiencing amplitude for years, but they never phrase it that way. They just say, Budweiser, and that says it all. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. Hey, ma'am, what's for dinner? Hey, ma'am, what you got? It's time to get ready for the great outdoors, and your ShopRite supermarket has everything you'll need for cookout dinners and fun in the sun. And for this week's dinners, ShopRite is featuring whole grade A frying chickens just 37 cents a pound. Roasting chickens up to 4 pounds, 47 cents a pound. Choice beef rib steaks $1.19 a pound. ShopRite franks 89 cents a pound. Get all your outdoor cooking equipment and many great food values at your ShopRite supermarket. She does all that she can do. She lets ShopRite do the rest. Hey, my, what's for dinner? ShopRite has the answer. Have you ever had a mask made of your face? It's a quite terrifying experience. The material is laid on like shaving soap or a mud bath, and you lie there while it hardens and sets. In the last moments, there is an excess of heat and a feeling as if you will be buried forever in concrete or stone. You can breathe, but the shut-in feeling, the claustrophobia, suggests you can't, that maybe whoever it is making the mask wants to kill you, smother you, like Beth, wordless, speechless helpless at this moment. Hand me the straws, Nora. Here you are. What a really dreadful thing to do to the child. Now, don't try to talk, dearest. The plastic is just beginning to set. It won't be much longer. I'm going to have to cover your mouth now, so I'll put these straws in your nose and you'll be able to breathe. (laughs) Now, the thing is not to get panicky. The whole thing is perfectly barbarous. Shut up, Nora. There's not a thing in the world to worry about, Beth. It just sort of draws, and there's a feeling that it's clamping down. But it's soon over. Trust me, darling. Please don't worry about a thing. I... Oh. I thought I was going to die. I've got the most beautiful mold of your face. You'll see it was worth it. Oh, honestly, darling, I was scared. <laughs> I'm like Elizabeth. I'm much too young to die. Will you forget her? Yeah, I'd like to, but she haunts me. I never, ever thought about death before, and now suddenly... Darling, have you made a will? <laughs> Good Lord, Beth. You are morbid. No, since you ask. Well, you should. We... Well, everyone should. Well, I expect you're quite right. I'm... I'm rather careless about money matters. I'll take care of it first thing in the morning. May I come with you? Why, if, if you want. But... I, I, I want to make one too, Charles. It's uh, really quite important. 
Well, my dear, if you insist. See, I never told you, Charles, that I'm really worth an awful lot of money. Who colors? Yes, Inspector. Remember that chap in Margate we had to look into because he kept getting rid of well-to-do wives at quite a clip? Uh, that'd be Humbert, sir. Uh, Tall, dark chap with a thick beard. Made a joke about Bluebeard. Oh, did I? Have we a photo of him handy? Oh, I think I could dig one up. Hmm. Why don't you? And, uh, by the by, next weekend's Halloween. I think I might leave crime to the small fry and take a busman's holiday. Oh, you deserve it, sir. Where away. <laughs> well, I might take a run up to the Cotswolds. Sort of a sentimental journey, you might say. Morning, Beth. Special today, kippers. Oh, no, thank you. Not for me. Oh, out of sorts, dear. I, I haven't... I didn't sleep so well. Just a, just a little orange juice and coffee. Oh, absolutely. Well, anything wrong? Oh, no, not really. You know, I guess maybe I ought to look out for those toddies of yours. Oh, why, Beth, nothing but a little scotch, sugar, and lemon. I didn't mean I suspected the ingredients. I, it's just that maybe I can't handle quite so much whiskey. Oh, there was only a nip in there. Child, you, you do look a little wan. Should we have Dr. Yule in to have a glance at you, do you think? Oh, I can't need a doctor. I'm always so healthy. Oh, change of clime and all that, dear, and damp old England. Flu is always floating around. Why don't we just play safe? What do you think, Doctor? Oh, well, nothing serious, of course, but a, a high-strung young lady, you know. Well, sensitive, naturally, but high-strung. Well, you know Americans, very suggestible... What is this notion she has about somebody on horseback without a head? <laughs> I beg your pardon? Oh, some legend about a girl who looked like her centuries ago. I haven't the foggiest idea. Hmm, yeah. Well, for the moment, there's no real concern. I've left a sedative to be filled at the pharmacist with your sister. Convenient thing she happens to be an RN. <laughs> You're sure you're up to this, Beth? Oh, Charles, I simply had to get out of doors and away from the cottage. Let's just enjoy a walk, a walk into the castle and pretend it's all the beginning. Well, now, just stay well in the center of the drawbridge. Needs a lot of repairs. You know, it's just incredible to think that knights in armor rode across this bridge. How far do you suppose it's down to the bottom of the old moat? Oh, 50, 60 feet, perhaps. A mess, isn't it? All those weeds and jagged rocks. Can we go in and poke about? Your wish is my command. Beth? Right here. Where on earth have you got to? Like a magnet. Right back to her. The Lady Elizabeth. She fascinates me so. Well, there really isn't all that much resemblance. Oh, I don't agree. She could be my twin. It's funny. What's funny? Well, it's so hard to put into words, Charles. It's, it's just a feeling. I mean, her portrait is just as old, and the paint is just as cracked as all the others, but somehow she feels so immediate, so today. Almost, almost as if she just sat for the portrait. And the artist had just finished it. <laughs> that is rather strange. You can see that the pigments are medieval. The patina is centuries old, just like the model. I know. I should stop identifying myself with her just because of a chance resemblance. Oh, Charles, I'm cold. Let's get back to the gatehouse and that nice living room fire. Oh, you do look a bit knocked about, Beth. Perhaps you ought to turn in a little early. I guess so. On top of everything else, I do think our damp weather does take a bit of getting used to. I have the kettle on the boil to whip you up a nice stout toddy. Oh, I don't want anything to drink. Oh, just a bit, love. To disguise the taste of old Dr. Yule's sedative. Why he has to stick to powders instead of up-to-date pills is beyond me. 
Well, while you're brewing that toddy, I have some letters to finish. Letters? Oh, I've been very remiss. I have all sorts of friends and half-relations in America who, who don't even know I'm married. I've got to write them. Oh, of course. Now you go and get them finished. And I'll brew you up something nice to put you to sleep. <laughs> Hey, you are, darling. Nora's best. Plus Dr. Yule's guaranteed potion for a restful night. Mm, thanks, Charles. Oh, I'm sorry to be such a bother. Hush. Get all your letters finished? Yes. I must mail them first thing tomorrow. Let me have them, darling. I have to run into the village to pick up the post. I'll send them off then. Okay. And by the by, I hate to bother you with this, but as long as you have pen in hand, want to look this over and sign it? What is it? That last will and testament that you insisted on making. Technically, I suppose I should have John and Nellie witness your signing, but I'm sure they'll take the will for the deed, if you'll excuse a complicated pun. <laughs> Sign it later. Oh, yes, let's get it out of the way. I have enough morbid thoughts as it is. What morbid thoughts? There. I hope to God it never has to be executed. Amen. I drink your toddy... And it will relax you. All you need is a good night's sleep. Mm, I'd give anything for that. If I could just stop dreaming about her or hearing those hoofbeats. Charles. What, dear? You don't think I'm going crazy, losing my mind? Oh, now, come on. Drink up. And I'll hold you tight till you go to sleep. Mm, that's strong. But he does feel good. Charles, you're so good to me. How can I ever repay you? You will, darling. You will. Charles. Charles. What? what? Charles, wake up. Can't you hear them? There they are again. What is it, Beth? Who beats? This time they're coming straight for the house. Where are you going, Beth? I've got to see. It's the dead of night. You can't see anything. It's bright moonlight out. Oh, God. She's right in the courtyard below. Stop it, Beth. She's, she's throwing back the hood of the cave. Really you pull back her head? She's throwing no your head. There's nothing out there. Oh, no. Her head. Get her hand. She's holding it up by the hair. Charles, come quick, quick. All right, all right. Hey, it looks a thousand years old. Oh, but it's my baby. Charles, help me. It's me. the question narrows itself down to a very simple one. Which lady has lost her head completely? Elizabeth from the past, who will not stay at rest? Or Beth from the present, who seems bound to raise her from the grave? I'll be back with at least some of the answers when I return shortly with Act Three. And now another story of the ball and chain as Kellogg's special K presents Veronica and Jack. Oh, Jeffrey, isn't this romantic? Out in a quiet lake at night with you rowing the boat. Yes, Veronica, it's really neat. Jeffrey, what was that? Uh, frogs. Frogs that go bonk? Uh, they're pretty weird frogs. Oh, Jeffrey, you're such a card. You have a ball and chain, like the ones they use in those special K commercials. Yes, Veronica, it symbolizes my few pounds of extra weight. But I'm going to get rid of it. How? Uh, by exercising. You know, like rowing this boat and eating smart at every meal, starting with a special K breakfast. You mean a one? One ounce bowl of high protein special K, four ounces of skim milk, orange juice, and coffee? Uh, precisely. It's less than 240 calories and it tastes delicious. It'll help me get rid of this ball and chain. I'll help too, Jeff. After all, we're all in the same boat. <gasps> you have a ball and chain too. <laughs> Your happy ending could begin with a special K breakfast from Kellogg's. This year, Italy gives you the one thing every vacationer wants for his money more. In fact, your dollar buys more in Italy than in 85% of the tourist countries of Europe. Take restaurants. There's one in Rome called Ambasciata d'Abruzzo. 
without asking you, the waiter brings a whole ham, two dozen kinds of sausage, a huge antipasto, and three courses of pasta. When you've consumed all this, the waiter finally asks, what would you like to eat? You order the meat platter and get six kinds of roasts. After a salad, cheese, fruit, and cake, the waiter now asks, how much would you like to pay? You agree to $5 a person. And how do you get to this feast? On Alitalia. No other airline flies only 747s nonstop from New York to Italy. Call an expert, your travel agent, or Alitalia, and come to Alitalia's Italy, where you get more than you dreamed of for less than you thought. Based on exchange rates as of April 1st, 1974. North Jersey is certainly getting a higher yield this spring, especially with Suburban Savings Special High Yield Savings Certificate that you can raise for fun and profit. All you have to do is plant a modest $2,500 minimum in Suburban's limited issue 7.50% savings certificate. Then put your certificate in a nice safe place. Suburban takes care of the rest by compounding interest continuously from day of deposit paid quarterly. You'll get a nice healthy 7.90% effective annual yield on your 7.50 savings certificate when you let it grow from 4 to 10 years. Early withdrawal prior to maturity is, of course, subject to a substantial penalty. So for a nice healthy 7.90% annual effective yield, grow Suburban 7.50% savings certificate for fun and profit at any Suburban saving office in Bayonne, Edgewater, Elmwood Park, Emerson, Hackettstown, Morris Plains, Nutley, Paramus, and Sparta. once again to the problem of our twin damsels in distress. The medieval one has vanished into thin air by now, if indeed she ever materialized from there, while our modern Beth has confounded us and her husband by doing something quite medieval, or at least old-fashioned. Beth? Mm-hmm. Beth? Oh, yeah. Beth, it's Charles. Wake up. What? what? Ch- Charles? Oh... What happened to me? What? Uh, what happened to her? Charles. Now, darling, she... darling, listen to me. There was nobody there. Oh, but I saw her. I saw her sitting, sitting side saddle on the horse, and and when she dropped the hood, Beth, it was a dream. She had no head, no head at all, except in her hand. You've got to stop it, Beth. She was holding it by the hair, and the face was all wrinkled like a like a mummy. Beth, I... and it was my face, just like me. And, and do you know what she was doing? Do you know what she was doing? You've got to stop this. I can't... She was beckoning to me, Charles, calling me down. She wanted me. She wanted my head. Stop it, Beth. Stop it, Beth. Beth. Do you know the awful thing? I could feel myself being tucked, pulled toward her. If I hadn't fainted, I... Oh, God. God, Charles, what's the matter with me? What's wrong? What's that? Beth, get hold of yourself. It must be Nora. Yes? Charles, has something happened? Come in, Nora. The door's open. Bless us. What's the matter with the child? She just had a bad dream. It wasn't a dream. The headless Elizabeth again? Yes, she thought she heard her ride into the court below the window. I did. I did. I did see her. Oh, let me take the child, Charles. No, 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 no. Get a sedative powder. We've got to calm her down. I don't want any... Medicine. Just let us take care of you, Beth. We know what we're doing. Well, I I think we've got her under control now. I'm so sorry to rout you out so early in the morning, particularly on All Hallows Day. Oh, that's quite all right, Mr. Rudley. Quite all right. You'd never have gotten her calm down without a shot from me. Oh, silly children and their Halloween pranks. I can't imagine how they got this far out of the village. Did, uh, did you see this apparition that scared Mrs. Rudley so? Oh, good Lord, no. By the time I got to the window, the yard was bare. How the young'uns could have disappeared so far? Oh, I don't think this was any childish prank. What? No, oh, it's something much more serious, I'm afraid. You don't mean sleepwalking? Oh, dear me, that too. I see... 
Now, you say she lost her father recently. Yes, a, a year ago. And they were very close. Yes, extraordinarily so, I would say. What is it, Doctor? You don't think... That... I'll tell you what I do think, Mr. Rudley, and I'm going to be very honest. This case, your wife's problem, is far beyond a country doctor like myself. I think she needs psychiatric help. Oh, no. For her own sake. If it weren't for the fact that your sister is a registered nurse, my recommendation would be to have her immediately hospitalized. Psychiatric diagnosis is still my recommendation. I believe it's vital to keep her from harming herself. Harming herself? How? Oh, I don't know that. But I do know that for whatever reason, she is, well, in layman's terms, a nervous wreck. Hypertense, in spite of all the sedation I've been giving her. Subject to delusions and the victim of a... of a death wish. You must get help very quickly. Help from a specialist. And she should not be left alone for a moment. Well, that's quite a blow. I'm sorry, but... Even suicide is not out of the question. Good Lord. I... I wonder... C could I talk to her now? Well, she may be a bit drowsy, but if she's not asleep, yes. Now, I'd like to suggest some doctor... Doctor, who... I want you to. I, I have to go into the village to pick up the post. Would you mind dropping me? We can talk on the way. I am splendid. I'll only be a minute. I want to go back to Beth. Meet you at your car. Oh, it's you, Charles. Is she asleep? No. No, I'm awake. Charles? Yes, darling? Don't leave me. Stay with me. Don't leave me. Of course I won't leave you. You can't get rid of me. I've been very silly, haven't I? I can't quite remember. There's nothing to remember. What you need's a nice long sleep. And while you're having it, I'm going to the village for a few minutes, get the post, and a few things we need for dinner. And the post? Uh, mail? Oh, oh. Oh, yes, don't forget to mail my letters. I should say not. Have them right here in my pocket. You won't be... You won't be long. No, not over an hour. And Nora will be right here with you every moment I'm gone. Beth, dear, don't you worry. Charles and I know just how to take care of you. Yes? Oh, how do you do? Are Mr. and Mrs. Rudley at home? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Mr. Rudley's off to the village, and I'm afraid Mrs. Rudley is, is indisposed. Oh, I'm sorry. Not serious, I hope? Oh, no, just a little bout with the flu. May I say who was calling? Oh, yes, of course. Alfred Finchley. Oh, well, are you a friend of Mrs. Rudley's? Uh, no, no, not really. Old army chum of her father's. Oh. Just happened to be driving by, and I'd heard she'd been married, and... I wanted to, well, you know, pay my respects. Oh, well, I know Beth will be so sorry not to have seen you. I'm her sister-in-law, by oh, the way. How do you do? <laughs> now, perhaps later this afternoon, if there was some place she could call you. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm driving back to London. Eh, hey, well, that's a lot, Mr. Rudley. You owe me tuppence on the one overweight letter. There you are, Mr. Morgan. Anything to go out, sir? No, no letters this time. I thought I saw some in your pocket. Uh, no, these are not going to be posted. I'll take care of those myself. As you will, sir. Hey, it's uh, just opening time. Want to step in the pub and have a nice warm and beer? Not this time, Mr. Morgan. Got quite a long walk home. That'll be on my way if I hope to make it by lunch. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Hey, that's it. Eleven says... All open for business. <laughs> Not one ruddy customer. Oh, afternoon, Governor. Just ten minutes before two, so if you want one, better step lively into the bar before closing time. I, um, thank you, Barky. I think I will. Name is Margate, sir. Donald Margate, proprietor. And what'll it be? Well, uh, I think I should have a gin and, if you don't mind. Yep. <laughs> Coming right up. Just passing through. Yes. Lovely country. Oh, we like it. Yeah, quite a bit of work going on at Chauncey Castle. <laughs> There's the gin answer. Oh, thank you. 
Oh, yes, yes. Going to be good for business. Oh, so? Going to open it to the public, the family is. Hmm. Make a tourist attraction. Ah, well, I thought it was because the present incumbent had got married. Present incumbent? Oh, you mean the doddery old duke? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I meant young Mr. Rudley. Oh, him? Why, Lord bless your soul, he's not family, sir. Oh, really? No, no, he's just renting. Lease is almost up, I think. Rudley, hmm? I think I once knew a... What's he look like? <laughs> you should have been here when I opened. You could have seen for yourself. Tall, dark chap he is. Yes. He wouldn't by any chance be this chap in his picture, huh? Eh, hey, well, no. That'd be hard to tell. I mean, Mr. Rudley's clean-shaven and a lot thinner than this chap. Still, take away the beard, cut off some of the hair... Eh, no, I, I just wouldn't know. <laughs> uh, do you have a doctor in town? Oh, yes, sir, that'd be Dr. Yudin. You'd find him right across the green, sir. Good timing, too, because uh, I have to close. The timing couldn't be worse, Nora. She never mentioned she knew anyone in England. Oh, I don't think we have to worry. He was just a little wisp of a man, very inoffensive. You doctor her food at lunch. Get another of your special toddies into her before she goes to bed. We'll do it tonight. Well, it seems a bit soon. A lot faster than usual. But if you insist, darling, naturally we'll go ahead. Kiss me. Yes, sister dear. <laughs> well, at least she is the last one. She has enough money to leave you. So I can stop sharing you with the, the pigeons. <laughs> Inspector Finchley, Scotland Yard, Doctor. My credentials. Oh, dear me, a, a, a policeman, but why on earth? Uh, could you answer my question? Well, well of course. Uh, yes, I've called on her several times in the last ten days or so. Uh, what's the matter with her, Doctor? Well, that's rather difficult to say. She has um, uh, delusions. Caused by what? Oh, now, Inspector, that would take a psychiatrist to explain. Uh, she it. couldn't be under the influence of drugs, could she? Drugs. Why, I... I uh, does this man look at all familiar to you, Dr. Yule? No, I, I, I can't say. I, uh, no, just a minute. Let me get my magnifying glass. Now, where did I... Oh, oh yes, here it is. Uh, yes. Oh, yes, by George. Uh, partly the facial structure, of course, but, but this is what did it. You, you see that old scar there bisecting the left eyebrow, more or less? Yes. Mm, something a doctor would notice because it wasn't a very good job of suturing. Yes, I think I could swear. Uh, shave off the mustache, the beard, and the sideburns. And by George, you'd have Charles Rudley. Or George Humbert. <laughs> God for the help of Elizabeth Spanton Steed. I thought we'd never get her downstairs. You wouldn't think she'd be so heavy. Dead weight, brother dear. Not quite yet. Poor Beth. A pity. Oh, no time for sentiment. She's worth a lot more to us. Dead. Now help me get her off the horse and then get him back to the stable and call the doctor. After you throw her over into the moat, you'd better make very sure she's dead. I'll make sure. All right. I'll get her off the horse. Stand still, Rudley. Just hold it right there. What? I've got you covered. This is the police. Don't move. Oh, you fool. Well, they're not going to get me. It's too late. Get out of my way. <laughs> Watch it. Don't shoot after the horse. We don't want to harm the girl. <laughs> I just can't believe it, Uncle Alfie. Well, I can't blame you, my dear. Nasty chap you got mixed up with. Three others before you he got away with. The same way? Mm, with variations. He got a little too fancy on this one. The false portrait, but the apparent nervous ailments and the sleepwalking were the key to all of them. I, I feel as though I'm going to be sick. A little pass, dear. He was a bad lot. Worth not one single tear. And Nora. She she was the one on horseback. 
With the costume rigged to appear as if the wearer was headless. And a papier-mâché head made from your life mask. I think... I think she's almost worse than him. And to think she got away scot-free. Not quite, my dear. We'll catch up with her. Now, you rest a while and don't worry. I'm right outside. As long as I'm around, you'll never have to worry again. (laughs) Good night. Good night, Uncle Alfie. All right, Doctor. Oh, yes, yes, she'll be fine. You, um, uh, you say you did catch up with the woman? Nora. Yeah. A lot more than just police caught up with her. You know the work they're doing on the castle? How's it called? Well, apparently they found some structural weakness in the arch of the main gate. So they supported it by stretching a thin steel cable from one side to the other... Well over normal head height, of course, if you're walking. But unfortunately, not high enough to clear someone on horseback. Good Lord, no. Oh, yes. Cut her head off as clean as a whistle. Charles Rudley was eventually convicted of murder of one of his earlier wives. He was sentenced to life imprisonment. His common-law wife, Nora, lost her life and, of course, her head. It's nice to consider that, in her case at least, the punishment fit the crime. I'll be back shortly. Well, good evening, uh, Mystery Theater fans. This is uh, Gene Shepard. And we're sitting here having a very friendly roundtable discussion with many of our listeners who gather nightly here at uh, the 710 spot on the dial. And if you'd like to join our little evening gatherings, I'm on every night at, uh, let's see, it's 9.15 now. 9.15. You write that down and make sure that uh, you bring all the things you need to be prepared for a fantastic evening. I'm on every night from 9.15 until 10. Join our little group some night. We sit around and discuss the world and enjoy life and and uh, walk around in the weeds and uh, just be people. 9.15 on WOR. From the WOR newsroom, the winner of the 100th running of the Kentucky Derby, Cannonade. Details upcoming in the news at 6 with Roger Skibbenes. An invitation. This is Peter Roberts. Join us Sunday morning, 8.15 to 10, here on WOR for Rambling with Roberts. Two hours of music... Uh, especially selected for Sunday morning listening pleasure, along with uh, old bits of weather information, news headlines, uh, bits of trivia such as the fact that uh, a man from Onoa, Iowa, received a patent for what he called Eskimo pie, which was ice cream coated with chocolate. It all happened in 1922. It may not seem like very much in the way of history, But it does take place, these little bits of trivia and information, on Rambling with Roberts. So, of a Sunday morning, make a note. 8.15 to 10, right here at 7.10 on your dial, come Rambling with Roberts. You don't have to give us an RSVP, just be on hand. Thank you. Uncle Alfie proved to be right about the resiliency of youth. It took a couple of years, but eventually Beth settled down and is happily married to a psychiatrist in Duluth. As for this fable itself, it also goes to prove that time not only heals all wounds, but eventually wounds all heals. Our cast included Kim Hunter, Nick Pryor, Bryna Rayburn, Ian Martin, and Court Benson. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. This is a voodoo doll. All of him is made with things that once belonged to Triedo. Only one last thing I needed to make the spell work. The weapon... Now, at last, I have in my hand the instrument of destruction. I straighten out the circle, turn 
turn the head to the sky and death the tail towards the ground and strike. What have I done, Mr. Ramsey? You... You drove the bracelet like a knife straight through the doll's head. From temple to temple. Hernando Trejado will be dead by midnight. And we will all be free. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. W.R. Mystery Theater has been brought to you by ShopRite Supermarkets, where you get a lot more for a little less. And by Suburban Savings, with offices throughout North New Jersey. The preceding Mystery Theater program is furnished by the CBS Radio Network. Five o'clock, time for the news and the hour from the W.O.R. Newsroom. This is Roger Skibbenes reporting. Under sunny skies, 60 degrees now in midtown Manhattan. Clear and cool tonight, with a low 40 to 45 degrees. And it's going to be sunny and cool tomorrow with a high near 60. Fair, not as cool tomorrow night. More on the weather later on. Some $20 million in art treasures were recovered today in Ireland. Police in Dublin say the masterpieces stolen a week ago in what has been described as the biggest art robbery in history were found in West Cork. A woman is now being questioned. Yesterday, there was a ransom demand for $1.2 million dollars. Also, the note sent to police insisted that four persons imprisoned in New England be transferred to Irish jails. The owner of the painting, Sir Alfred Beatt, refused to pay any ransom, and the British refused to transfer the prisoners. The paintings, all of them, all $20 million worth, were described as not being harmed. Ron Ziegler, President Nixon's news secretary, today accused those who read the Watergate, Watergate transcripts and believe former White House counsel John Dean over President Nixon as being partisan. Ziegler, speaking to newsmen in Spokane, said the transcribed Watergate tapes show numerous and serious contradictions in the testimony of John Dean. Two Republicans on the Senate Watergate Committee, Howard Baker of Tennessee and Lowell Weicker of Connecticut, have made the comment that the transcripts seem to support Dean's testimony before the Senate panel. The president is in Spokane, Washington this afternoon for the opening of Expo 74. It follows on the heels of a public appearance in Phoenix, Arizona last night where he addressed a Republican rally and said it's time to move beyond Watergate and get on with the business of America. Seattle police have in their custody this afternoon a 21-year-old soldier from Fort Lewis, Washington. He was picked up with two weapons and a hefty supply of ammunition. He's accused of threatening the president's life. From Washington this afternoon comes word that the president has decided not to reduce the 10-year sentence against Lieutenant William Calley, charged with the killing of civilians during the massacre at My Lai in South Vietnam. Calley, presently out of jail on bond, would be eligible for parole after an additional six months' confinement. Here in New York, a 15-year-old is presently undergoing surgery for a bullet wound in the thigh. An unidentified woman was treated for a gunshot wound and discharged from Morrisania Hospital in the Bronx. The injuries occurred when transit police on a stakeout apparently intervened during an attempted holdup of a change booth at the 167th Grand Concourse Station of the IND. According to police, the youth drew a gun, pointed it at an officer. The transit cop then fired five shots. It was later determined that the pistol pointed at the officer was a toy gun. It's believed that the three youths were involved. One apparently got away. Another is being questioned at the 44th Precinct in the Bronx. A citywide search is on at this hour by police in an effort to recapture two men who managed to escape from the Brooklyn House of Detention last night. The two are 26-year-old George Harper of 1463 Pacific Street in Brooklyn and 42-year-old Stephen Fraser of 132-05, 155th Street in Queens. Harper is charged with murder. Fraser is accused of assault and kidnapping. Both men are considered dangerous. 
Two other inmates attempted to break out with Fraser and Harper, but were captured almost immediately. Before the weather, this word. What's so special about tomorrow's New York Times? Well, for one thing, the Sunday Times Book Review features a special 36-page section entirely about children's books. And besides this feature, which includes reviews of nearly 100 children's books, the travel section of tomorrow's New York Times is also special, because tomorrow it previews summer vacations. You'll get some great ideas on where to go this summer and how much it will cost. Even if you're staying home, you'll find excellent reading in the Sunday Times travel section, including a fascinating story of a man and his dog who sailed the dangerous route completely around Long Island and in a 12-foot sailboat. Also in tomorrow's New York Times, colorful coverage of the Kentucky Derby, a first-hand report on what life is like in Israel today, and helpful tips on how to get rid of plant diseases as well as weeds in your lawn. So be sure you get your copy of tomorrow's New York Times. And for information on home delivery of the Times, just call MU70700. That's area code 212, then dial MU70700. The New York Times. The WOR Weather Watch update, clear and cool tonight with a low 40 to 45 degrees. Tomorrow, sunny and cool. The high tomorrow near 60 degrees. And tomorrow night, the low near 50. Monday, increasing cloudiness with a chance of showers. Right now, 60 degrees under sunny skies in midtown Manhattan. And that's the news at 5 from the WOR Newsroom. Roger Skibbenus reporting. For news as it happens, keep tuned to WOR New York, the talk of New York.